Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick preview of the Sony QX1. This is part of Sony's latest refresh of the QX lens style of camera lineup. You can see they've also announced the QX30, which incorporates a 30x lens, but the QX1 is what really has my interest. For those of you unfamiliar with the QX lineup, I covered the QX100 last year, which essentially took the sensor from the RX100 lineup of cameras and stuck it into a lens that you could attach to your smartphone, iOS or Android alike, and essentially turn your smartphone into a digital camera. So for those of you that focus on using your smartphone on a day-to-day -day basis as your camera, Sony is looking to give you better photo and video capability. This new generation takes that to a whole nother level. As I mentioned, the QX30, all about giving you even more optical zoom capability, but the QX1, as I stated, is what really has my interest, and that's because it actually is an interchangeable lens uh, version of the QX family, so you can attach any E-mount lens to this. Uh, more importantly, it has an APS-C class sensor rated at 20 megapixels. Why is this important? Well, the QX100 was all about giving you the best possible image and video quality that a smartphone could ever use. By the way, the way these devices work, they have Wi-Fi and NFC, as well as their own uh, SD card slot for capturing images, but then using Sony's Play Memory software in tandem with a direct Wi-Fi connection, this $400 body only, this does not come with a lens by the way, you will need to add your own e-mount glass, uh, you probably already have it, that's who they're targeting for the most part, uh, you will then use the Play Memories app with uh, that direct Wi-Fi connection which you can initiate the handshake using NFC, so a simple touch of NFC contact points, will then allow you to start taking pictures as well as video using this interchangeable lens camera, which of course is missing the rest of the body of a traditional uh, APS-C mirrorless camera from Sony, but that's the utility of this. A lot of people look at a product like this and say it makes absolutely no sense, there's nothing practical about it, if I'm going to have to carry it, and it is an extra thing to carry, why not carry a camera? And I understand exactly where they're coming from. And what makes this unique, frankly, is that much like the first QX to hit the market, this just, as I mentioned, pushes the envelope and establishes an even more flexible, even more creative tool for those that are actually interested in using something like this. And I'm not going to get into the variety of creative applications because it's a really wide array. Uh, in terms of practicality, though, go ahead and watch my QX100 review, and I'll be the first to tell you, it wasn't really ready for prime time. I would always recommend an RX100 camera rather than the gimmick, really, of having a sensor you can attach to your phone and then hopefully Wi-Fi uh, will be a strong enough direct Wi-Fi connection. Again, you don't need the internet for those of you that get confused by hearing that. You just need a device that has a Wi-Fi radio. So your phone, smartphone, uh, Android or iOS, that's what you need in order to get the Play Memories app simply does a direct Wi-Fi connection to this device and as I mentioned with any e-mount lens you now literally have turned your phone effectively into a digital SLR and I think that's really the bragging light uh, bragging right excuse me of the QX1 which makes it incredibly unique all of the other uh, lens style cameras that Sony's introduced not that there are so many there are only two prior to this were far more gimmick than actual standard whereas this now gives us literally a digital SLR on our phone. Uh, so you can see manual control right there of the flash and of course your, in, your interchangeable lens system that you're attaching to this lens style camera. Uh, the NFC handshake will allow a direct Wi-Fi connection to give you full control and when it's mounted it's literally going to make your phone look like uh, a camera. Now how top heavy or uneven it's going to get as you add larger lenses that's self-explanatory. You know, if you try to add uh, an 18 to 200 lens, it's going to be absurd. But if you're using stuff like, uh, I don't know, the 50 millimeter E-mount native lens, any of the early E-mount native glass or the kit glass uh, that's out there, it's going to be, I would say, relatively balanced. It's only when you get into much larger uh, E-mount lenses that this could get ridiculous. But if it's on a tripod, 
it doesn't really matter. We're speaking strictly when it's mounted to your device. Keep in mind, this will work with tablets as well, both Android and iOS. So this isn't just for smartphones, but that is the target market. Uh, you can see, essentially, they're telling you you can shoot and enjoy images through the smartphone's large LCD screen. Of course, that's self-explanatory. It'll also save an image uh, that it will directly uh, shoot over to your device, smartphone or tablet, and you can select the quality of that image. Remember, it will independently record your images and video directly to an SD card on board this module right here. And it will actually operate without uh, your smartphone or Wi-Fi device. You won't have a way of previewing what you're shooting. It is literally shooting blind, but you do have that ability. And that's why it states it'll save the images on both your camera and phone. Uh, pretty much simultaneously. And then you can use apps to edit and share photos instantly online. Uh, just a quick description of what comes in box. It does use the same FW50 that all of Sony's uh, alpha cameras essentially use in the E-mount lineup, so there's no surprise there. Sony's really just working with what they presently have and just being innovative like they usually are. Uh, the smartphone attachment for mounting, there are limitations. I don't believe that this is, it may accommodate uh, the new Note series of phones, but generally uh, this wasn't the best uh, fit for larger handsets. We'll see uh, when it actually hits uh, shelves in October how it fares with larger phones. Of course, a body cap, a micro USB cable, a wrist strap, and the instruction manual. In terms of other photos, just to show you online, there you can see the sensor head on and it literally is just a sensor with an e-mount waiting to be utilized and again for those of you that want to be creative get different angles that you traditionally couldn't accommodate with photographic gear uh, that generally would even in the e-mount lineup of mirrorless cameras would be very small still nothing would approach this so this really is leveraging direct Wi-Fi uh, and some incredible uh, I would say APS-C performance from Sony's DI segment of their business to create a whole new camera market uh, and whether or not it will succeed is certainly still a question mark but the fact that Sony's even revamped it and come out with a new generation and really taken the QX100 to this level which is where in my opinion if it could have began uh, it would have been even better uh, it's just very impressive and it's not just about proof of concept it's as I said before literally turning your phone into a digital SLR now the Wi-Fi performance, the manual controls, those are all going to affect how seamlessly uh, this truly is. And that experience is going to end up determining whether or not this will be a success. But f again, for all of those people that think this is an absurd uh, gimmick that really has no place in the market, uh, I would argue that it does have a place, and especially as it becomes less expensive, not only will it appeal to those of you that do only want to use your smartphone because of the instantaneous capability to share uh, and also convenience even though you are carrying a second item now that does need to be charged in the same way a camera would but you are getting something that literally gives you image quality unlike anything else uh, which the QX100 did as well uh, but this is a whole nother league and I think the biggest critique and criticism of the QX100 is why would I buy this uh, for such a high price tag when I could buy its own camera counterpart, the RX100, for the same price or close to the same price and not have any of the limitations or problems uh, like missing a shot because of lag on Wi-Fi or whatever it may be um, or just the startup time of the whole experience of tapping the NFC which sounds great but then in execution you'll miss your shot in many cases doing the pairing. Uh, so there there was a big argument and I think the key to that argument or winning it for Sony was saying what if we give you more and that's exactly what the QX1 does because now you aren't going to say well I'm making such a staunch or not staunch but stark I meant uh, compromise you literally are getting APS-C photographic capability now in the form of that compromise so if there was ever a reason to make that compromise you're looking at it. Granted, 400 is still a lot, especially this is body only. Most people are going to look at that and say, wait, there's no lens, but that's not the target market. The QX30 is designed for those of you that are just looking to upgrade what your smartphone can do, whether it's because it's you know old or just because you want better images uh, or because you simply want that 30 times reach. I mean, this is literally turning 
your phone into a mega zoom. Of course, nowhere near the same sensor. You are not working with an APS-C class sensor that would be basically the equivalent of what you would find uh, in a mirrorless E-mount camera from Sony and many other digital SLRs from uh, competing manufacturers. But same rules apply here with the QX30. You just don't have that image or video quality or the flexibility of using any piece of E-mount glass uh, for any creative shot that you could possibly want to create. But that pretty much sums up my preview. You even got a little bit on the QX30. Again, the QX1, you may not love the concept, but what it ends up delivering is uncompromised image capability when it comes to quality in a form factor unlike any we've seen before, utilizing today's uh, latest and greatest tech, our smartphones and tablets that really no one lives without at this point. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.